Fitzwater, Walter De Jesus Fitzwater. De Jesus is my middle name. I'm mixed race. I am an American born here, American father, but my mother's from Cuba. That's where I was raised. And I'm a white Cuban boy. As a matter of fact, it was very difficult for people to say my name. But I knew I was different. I always knew that I'd be coming to the States and, uh, you know, getting to meet my dad and his family. You asked me, did I meet my dad? And yes, I did meet my dad uh, after high school. And he was a very sweet man, very gentle, I thought. And it was very difficult for me to understand, you know, why was that strive that they had between my mom and dad? But again, that wasn't part of my deal. So I just dealt with about him, about knowing him and his family. And, you know, unfortunately he died young. Theater is my love. From the very five year old, I started loving to be on own stage. So movies, theaters, anything of the sort, I was always involved. And then as I grew up, went to college, I became involved with, with uh, architecture. But eventually I went to San Francisco and got to meet the Angels of Light, which was a theater troupe that was wild, extravagant, outrageous. And I, I thought, man, I, I met my people. And we did lots of theater. For about 20 years, we did a lot of street theater. And um, I was coming, running away from the HIV virus. And so I joined the support group. And in the support group, we did an exercise to write about the HIV character. So I started writing it down and you know, lo and behold, there was a script, me and the virus. And finally, Frida Saraga said, yeah, that's, that's terrific. Keep writing. <laughs> so I did. And that's how I wrote my first play. And that was, that was the birth of it. I had no intention of writing. I love it even more than being on stage. I used to think I'm going to die on stage. Now I think I want to die on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> the first play, um, I was told to go ahead and, and produce it, do it, show it. And I was excited about it. So we did that. We did many, many productions. Um, the other day I was cleaning out my files and I found a list of some of the plays that we had done that I had already forgotten that we had done those plays in different hospitals and, and schools. And it was just very interesting. Then um, we played with that for quite a few years uh, throughout the, the county. And we went outside of the state. But then I started to write more. Uh, I needed to I felt I, I, I could express myself uh, as well if I did more writing and talked about me, about myself. Um, my writing was from experience, from natural experience. So everything came from um, reality. All my shows were reality. And that's when I wrote The Embargo, which is a story about two Cuban brothers, one who is for The Embargo one against it. And then after doing that, I started thinking also about, maybe I should do something different. And I thought about doing a, a science fiction because I love science fiction and also did a play called The Cure. And that was about uh, in the future that a man with HIV and comes back to, to the world knowing that HIV wasn't there anymore. For some reason, I felt like the HIV was my leading character in all these writings, because uh, it did affect me a lot. Started performing because it's what I did, 
So I performed uh, in, in the role I did um, the part of myself, and then I did the part of the virus to be able to you know, get that good feel of it. And it was amazing because I thought I was going to love the virus, but it made me so mean. <laughs> I became a very mean person. So I couldn't wait to stop being the virus. So I, mean, I, I got mean. I got mean. They let me. It actually, the character just, just sucked in on me. I guess because I didn't write it. <laughs> You're a parasite. You live because I live. Then you tear at me until I have no force to fight back. Well, I won't allow this to happen. I'm fighting back. Yeah, yeah. But Did you get that? That yeah, you get? Yeah, yeah sadness, the sadness of it. Because we dealt with the artistic part of the group or the people who went to cultural um, exchanging. I mean, we worked for AT&T, the diversity group. We worked with that type of group that dealt with theater and expressing what was the new thing happening. So no, we were actually very well received. We used to sit at the end of the show, we would sit at the at the edge of the of, of the proscenium, the stage and we would ask people questions. And this is back in the 1990s. There was not a lot of information about HIV and AIDS. So we would get some really, you know, uh, startling questions asked of us. And I never forget that we were in, um, I can't remember exactly what college it was. And I do remember someone starting to get real uppity with me about being HIV positive and to the fact that I deserve to be HIV positive because of the way we lived. And I couldn't believe the way that the actors took over and they defended me. I just, I just thought that was amazing. There were plays about the HIV and AIDS. I remember, um, let's see, what's the name of the theater that we had done a couple of AIDS uh, uh, performances. Yeah, yeah, there were some AIDS stuff. The Eureka Theater, the Rhinoceros Theater. Yeah, those were small theater, and they were able, you know, to catch pretty much there at the end, you know, when when people were beginning to disappear. that a lot of the people left behind started doing shows about people deteriorating.
invited to go to Cuba. I've been wanting to go. And so to make the long story short, I did go and it was shocking to me to know that I was there. It was also shocking for me that I was there as a teacher and I was going to teach people with HIV and AIDS. So again, I was still in the same vein of AIDS and HIV. Um, but I was very surprised how um, organized they were in Cuba by the HIV and how they regarded with it as a disease. And they, they actually were able to um, see it as a very negative thing. You know, here it's like, oh yeah, but there it's more like, you know, very negative. So you didn't have as much liberty in Cuba as you do here, but somehow I think it was better uh, controlled. The problem is that we're not doing anything about it. Still the same? I think it's still a lot the same. We still look at the numbers, you know, the amount of people that are still infected. 35 million. We can't get to the mind of the individual that this is a, a, a mind-changing, uh, body-changing uh, disease. Yeah, sure, now there's pills that can cure you, but it doesn't cure you. I mean, there's still all the, the run-of-the-facts things that I have have been going through, you know, together with the diabetes and the two heart attacks that I've had, uh, all the fact that you're still immune and yeah, no, it's, it's, I, I don't wish it on anyone, even if there's a cure, I don't, I'd rather you not do, you deal with it. You know, it's, to me, it's not, it's not, it's just not at all like diabetes that you can take the medicine and live. I think it's a little deeper than that. First of all, it has a lot to do with sex. And sex is a, is a very powerful, you know, habit. <laughs> so if you're young, I mean, that's like pretty much important to those people that, you know, there has to be some, some involvement with sex and boom, there's the HIV and AIDS. When I came back to the States, I realized that, again, I had something to, to write about, something, a story that I could tell from my point of view. So then I decided to write the book. And um, first I had been trying to write a book about my life stories in Cuba, and I had written that, many chapters of it. But then my editor says, why don't you talk about your trip? That's the important part. So what I did is I blended the old and the new together and made the book of like the two in one. And I think it's come out pretty good. The new book is going back to San Francisco, the 70s and the 80s, which is something that we have been talking about. Again, this one is a fiction. And uh, because I have a little bit more liberty to, to intertwine some of the stories and create them a little bit more of a, of a fascinating book. You know, it's, it's still that our responsibility is ours. It's, it's, the, it's theater is we portray what we see. A lot of other people might not see it, but we see it because we're sensitive to it. Dear Mr. President Barack Obama, it is with great pleasure that I send my book to you. When I heard of your idea to chart a new relationship with Cuba, my first thought was, he must have read my book. The incredible project which you initialized to set in motion new relationship and conversations with the country of Cuba was a dream come true, which I had expected for a long time. Thank you. 
Thank you for doing this amazing feat, which has excited me so many of us. In the next years, I believe it will take courage and work from both countries for these achievements to come to effect. I began writing my book after visiting Cuba in 2005. I had many reasons for returning to this land where I was raised in the 1950s and also experienced the Castro Revolution during that time. I was lucky to find a reason to return. I was going to educate students about HIV and AIDS and its epidemic. But what I received was more than I could imagine to the days of growing up with my grandmother, the markets, vivid colors, and recollecting stories which taught me lessons about growing up and eventually life itself. Dear Walter, thank you for writing and for your kind gift. The best way to advance our nation's interests and values is through open engagement rather than isolation. That is why after more than half a century, the United States is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba and working toward normalizing relationships between our two countries. After decades of isolation failed to produce meaningful change, I traveled to Cuba to bury the last remnant of the Cold War in the Americas and to extend a hand of friendship to the Cuban people. By charting a new course, my administration is reaffirming our commitment to promoting the emergence of a more prosperous Cuba that respects the universal rights of all its citizens. To achieve this, the United States is taking steps to increase travel, commerce, and the flow of information to and from Cuba. We also reestablished diplomatic relations with the Cuban government, including opening an embassy in Havana and I've called on Congress to do their part and lift the embargo that is a legacy of a failed policy. Nobody represents America's values better than the American people, and I believe this contact will ultimately serve to empower our Cuban neighbors. Again, thank you for writing. We must create more opportunities and begin a new chapter among the nations of the Americas. By choosing to cut loose the shackles of the past, we can reach for a brighter future, for the Cuban people, for the American people, and for the world our children will inherit. Sincerely, Barack Obama. Mm-hmm.